home, students, we now come to one area where not much has been talked about or even written about is the correlation of two spiritual streams, one which is more esoteric by nature and the other which is aesthetic, that is Tantra and Natya. Why do it is because as we all move forward in the practice or the study of dance, there are certain areas where we ask ourselves why this has been given in this manner or why uh, Bharata has given the hastas in a particular order or why are the chapters designed in this manner. So is there something deeper to the popular adage that this was taken from this Veda, that from this Veda, together it was created as the fifth Natya Veda. Some places it is referred as Natya Upanishad, some places referred as Natya Tantra, even in Abhinadarpanam. So what is actually making Natya an Upanishad and what is actually making Natya also a Tantra? So this is why a concept and correlation between Tantra and Natya, at least an introduction to this view is being given here. The human body is certainly one piece of classic engineering, this designed to enable positive physical, emotional and above all spiritual enhancement. The art of dance when correlated with the science of Tantra is the union of Shiva Shakti. When the Ardhanari Shura within one's subtle body is in action, portraying the generative, operative and destructive forces through dance. Tantra, one of the most misused terms in modern days, has come to mean all kinds of negative practices, unfortunately. But it stands for the essence of weaving together, putting together spiritual knowledge, tantrayate, by actually participating in the cosmic reality of vibrating energy. A Tantra Shastra paradigm, Natya, can also be called as one such paradigm exemplifies conception of the Supreme Personality of God, the dual aspect when God himself becomes the universe beyond consciousness or Purusha and beyond energy or Prakriti as the complete whole, a fused, undivided one. With the force of dancing comes the discovery of this whole, the I, when the small I reunites with I, the Brahman, I am. What is that element, that essence or that principle that connects one to the dance, connects dance to life, connects one to the audiences and crossing all the barriers? Have we thought whether it is the body owning a spirit which wants to express or is it the spirit that is manifested in this form in order to express? So these are the questions we ask as we make a journey within along with the journeys we make outside as a performing artist. Natya Shastra in its references to Vedic texts refers to dramaturgy as the Natya Veda, the fifth Veda which has assimilated knowledge from all the other four Vedas which had not been open to all the people to practice. So this Natya Veda like the Tantras became open to all people with no barriers of age, caste or sex. Bharata begins with a salutation to Brahman and Shiva. Brahman's sankalpa, concentration and determination to create a fifth Veda and then refers to Brahma who gave this to him. He states the elevated status of this Shastra which emerged from Brahman's mouth, holy, pure and good. Bharata establishes Natya as a discipline encompassing in its totality the physical, psychical, metaphysical and synthesizing all other art forms. Tantra Shastra 
the fundamental principle of that is man is a microcosm of whatever exists in the outer universe. The center of the body is at the base of the spine which supports the whole body called Meru Danda and it is akin to Mount Meru supporting the earth. Sir John Woodrow in Shakti and Shakta has given a lot of elaboration on this. Man is composed of nature, meaning that his prana life force is activated by the five elements, along with mind and consciousness. Life force is a phenomenon of energy. The body with its solar and lunar energy, five elements, senses and the mind becomes a perfect temple for this inner worship. Tantra Yoga attempts to unify Shiva and Shakti in the subtle body, called Kundalini Yoga, opening up the chakras or energy centers. In Natya, the power is similarly awakened but through spontaneity. It is said in the legend of origin of Natya that Nahusha, the king, brought the sons of Bharata to introduce drama on earth. This Nahusha was the grandson of Swarabhanu or the serpent planet Rahu, himself the son of the lioness power Simhika or Adya Shakti. Now, does this have any connection with tantric concepts like the symbolic serpent arising from slumber to realize its oneness with the Supreme Self? When Rahu turns its purpose away from material gratification and unify its purpose with Ketu, then we have the raising of the Kundalini according to the scholars in astrology. Well, all these related concepts make us a little more aware with greater insight into the art form or the evolution of the art form or the origin of it. Bharada's chapter on the construction of playhouse and replicating the stages Vedika, making offerings, reveals the coexistence of Tantric Agamek Puja with Natya. Theatre was a model of the cosmos, each deity with a specific place in the cardinal directions that were already demarked and the center being Brahma Mandala, Throughout the holding of puja with Homa and Japa, offering of water, food, flowers, the space gets enlivened, given breath and soul and acquires the same potency as an image through the ceremony of infusing life, like prana pratishta. Based on the view considering the manifest and unmanifest as part of one unified reality, Nadja Shastra unravels multiple forms, accepts the formless and enters beyond concept of form itself. Tantra, the Agama, has Vedic origin too and includes mantra, yantra, meditational aspects of chakras and tanmatras to which initiation is through Guru Shishya Parampara, which is equally important in Natya tradition as both are para or transcendental knowledge passed on orally with arduous training. Natya has the human body as instrument, symbolism playing a large role. While Natya aspires to a state of bodilessness with dance of becoming the dance, the mind, the contemplating instrument on a deity, is transformed into that which it is meditating upon. Both in their ultimate progress aspire to go beyond the instrument, beyond the yantra, beyond the form. Abhinava Bharti and Vijnana Bhairava Tantra these are two texts which do open up a large scale knowledge for us when we talk of these two streams. The epitomic personage Abhinava Gupta calls Rasayana, the science of art, of rasa, so vegetable juices, etc., more or less the Indian equivalent of alchemy, an esoteric science in Abhinava Bharati. It commences with the praise of Shiva as Muladhara for the sprout of the seed of the world and being of the form of earth, it has the power of sustenance. Vijnan Bhairava Tantra is an ancient work on yoga also belonging to Kashmir Shaivism school of thoughts, also talking about aesthetics and consciousness. It describes 108 types of yogasanas and studiously avoids mechanical worship and ceremonies and goes directly to the heart of the union of consciousness with the divine. The Bhavabhuti, the dramatist, is probably the first to mention Bharata Muni as the author 
and he calls him Thaurya Trika Sutrakara. Trika Kashmir Shaivism highlights the doctrine of recognition and vibration. Kshem Raja explains that it is so called due to the three divisions of Shakti as transcendent, identity indifference and immanent known as Shiva, Shakti and Jiva. In the philosophy of recognition, it is proposed that the ultimate enlightenment consists of recognition that one's own true identity is Shiva. The philosophy of vibration speaks of the importance of experiencing Spanda, the pulse of consciousness. Every activity in the universe, as well as sensations, cognitions and emotions, emerge, flow and dissolve as part of the universal rhythm of the one reality Shiva. The symbiosis of consciousness, which is the essence of the matrix of Tantra, with artistic bliss actually predates Abhinava Gupta in texts as Vigyan Bhairava, Shiva Sutra and others, which variously interpret the broader philosophical rationalization of Tantra along with its assimilation to aesthetics. Abhinava describes aesthetic relishing as an immersion in Spanda where all forms of objective this are absorbed into universal I in the realization of aham idam, I am this. The Trika treatise suggests that while yoga sutras and Vedanta adopt the Vivekaja marka where Purusha is distinct from Prakriti, Tantra differs in following true yogaja, union of individual with universal and realization of supreme energy in everything. Here the highest reality, Bhairava means Bha, Bharana, Ra, Ravana, Va, Vamana meaning maintenance, withdrawal and projection of the world. With the practice of this Bhavana of disillusion into Vijnana or Chit, one will attain Bhairava known as Laya Bhavana as it is creative contemplation. The dancer experiencing oneness and difference by enacting several roles in a scientific way of using bhavas travels from third to second to first person and then no person in fact learns to participate in shiva's bliss of shakti by contemplating upon her as a reality underlying all chakras it is important to know the concept of chakras or the energy centers within the subtle body when we correlate Tantra and Natya. The dissolution and creation cycle which is played as a dance of Shiva Shakti is represented by the ascent of energy circles or lotuses chakras and their descent. With every descent there is a creation, with every ascent there is a dissolution. That is from the gross to the subtlest and from the subtlest to the grossest. Chakra means what revolves and hence it signifies a wheel and it is also represented by the lotuses, each petal in a chakra relating to one of the prime letters of the Sanskrit alphabet. The first root chakra called Muladhara chakra is the earth chakra with four petals, the lotus. Very often we depict Lord Ganesha as the lord of this chakra. It is the seat of the earth element or solid state of matter, governing seed symbol, syllable being the lam, the Bijakshara mantra of lam. It is interesting to study these Bijakshara mantras in relation to the solos which we have also in our dance. Uh, Swadishtana chakra which is the water chakra possesses six petals. It is the seat of the water element or liquid state of matter and the governing seed syllable is Vam. So each of these chakras have been given such uh, various characteristics. The Manipura chakra which is the third in the order in the subtle body is the fire chakra possessing ten petals the lotus possesses ten petals and the seat of fire element, the radiant state of matter with the governing syllable being Ram. Anahata chakra, the air chakra is the heart chakra with uh, twelve petals 
and uh, this is an important uh, chakra for the medley of emotions because uh, the anahata is very active when we as artists portray so many emotional states the governing syllable of um, anahata is yam vishuddha chakra the ether or the space akasha has uh, 16 petals consisting of the vowels of the sanskrit alphabet it is the uh, element of ether or the etheric state of matter with the governing seed syllable being hum the next uh, is ajna chakra the third eye chakra with two petals some call 48 petals consisting of the mantras hum and ksham it is a seat of the mind space which is the mental ether and its syllable being ksham meaning patience peace and fortitude so there is a meaning being given for this mental space chakra as well sahasra padma chakra the crown chakra with a thousand petals which when opens up you are in the elevated state of realizing the higher bliss of brahman they say it is the seat of the spirit the seat of atman its syllable is om the seed syllable and it's a seat of consciousness the consciousness space that is the origin of the mental and the material worlds now these chakras have both gross and subtle counterparts some of them are being associated also with the endocrine glands so we when we have an insight into them in fact many of the texts also indirectly refer to them like the the devi worshipful texts like uh, lalita sahasranam or sandurya lahari they very often refer to these chakras in vibration within as you are doing uh, your movement and even in some of the uh, great musical texts there is reference to the saptaswaras emanating from each of these chakras so these were very well known and practiced by the sages of yore and they were absorbed into the art practices so the bijaksha recitation also it works on sound energy if you realize the the sanskrit consonant and vowel together giving the powerful uh, sound energy vibration and uh, this has to be practiced in a very intricate manner hence we emphasize on the uh, the way the natvangam solus are said we emphasize on the from them starting from within and not just vocally so there is a lot of force in it uh, in kavutuns for example the temple ritual numbers invocatory numbers we find that the cholus which are used are very very closely related to the uh, the seed syllables of the tantric uh, worshipful uh, practices the next uh, uh, related topic we talk of is when we correlate these two streams we can analyze that the sattvika expressions emanate from sattva on a higher level which correspond to the higher chakras the others may belong to the rajas and the tamas category middle and the lower chakras manipura is considered the center of dynamism energy will power achievement which radiates through the entire human body so it is associated with the power of fire and digestion as well as the sense of sight and the action of movement so each chakra has its vibratory field and corresponds to points on our spine that have potent energy like i said before heart chakra is a medley of deep emotions like desire love joy lust and anger so the interplay of these emotions when they are evolving from an artist involved in the dramatic enterprise have connection with these innate vibratory fields in them of course the study of the character is equally important who's represented so one has to study 
deeper into what the the hero or the heroine who's depicted what his psychological state would be and then as it is introspected within internalized within one's own subtle mind and body would interact while one is depicting the particular character in chakras we have to give importance to the unstruck the unheard perceptive extrasensory chakra of anahata where exists higher intuitive perception and intelligence and it is the most active in the creation and transmission of rasa the navarasas can be correlated to the ascent and descent of vibrating consciousness within these chakras anahata expands and vibrates to accommodate so many emotions particularly compassion sublimates the sensuous by not restricting it in the lower swadhisthana chakra the spontaneous intuition of the artist in presenting and the spectator in receiving is due to the interaction of the forces of both anahata and the third eye which is ajna the entire graph of the navarasa suggests that we begin with love and go to other fleeting emotional states and transcend finally to dissolve into peace love and peace is the eternal nature not your portray so many bhavas but the shanta rasana bhava the underlying sheet of myriad actions remains after all the dramatic enterprise this ninth rasa signifies brahma vidya which is the ultimate joy after removing the veil of ignorance of names and forms actions and reactions after a tryst with the maya of bhavas yogic asanas integrated in the dance prayogas are helpful in raising the shakti of kundalini the soap and power the beautiful balance in the dance posture kindles it kumbha refers to an overflow flowing pot it also refers to a body filled with knowledge the traditional gurus say that an ardha mandali posture in perfect back erect shastravam posture held over years can bring in the mahakumbha by opening up energy centers triangular shapes and intersection and balancing them and the brahma sutra an imaginary line passing through the center of the body this is of course especially with relation to bharatanatyam this observation the heat during executing a long session of adavas in great speed in comparison with the coolness in relaxed tempo geometric shapes formed with an array of triangles to emphasis on gravity as well as levitation and dancing without constraints of time space or any desire to exhibit our steps in one's sadhana so that the journey within also happens along with the journey outside now why did bharata give the name rasa to aesthetic joy it is because rasa is universal taste is universal one may be born deaf dumb or blind but tongue being instrument of taste is almost always present at birth so no one is without it bharata muni speaks about rasas which have their own space purusharthas purushas or entities this universal rasa is unveiled to artist and spectator free of differentiating thoughts and with a heart open to receive unto oneself the abhinaya these universals are identified through esoteric meditation and tantra which has provided a ready canvas the artist is only painting or weaving on it while depicting or witnessing the personalities whom one has read about and cherish within one's space one literally detaches body consciousness and gets into the character one introspects and develops a beautiful connection with the character within oneself one is not limitedly relating to the rasa depicted by the scene but becomes aware of that which is already in us through an aesthetic experience mudras are sacred ritual gestures when used in dance they become an elaborate dance language they create an energy field with the ultimate goal of a higher state of consciousness the science of healthcare by mudras is a branch of hatha yoga the decoration of the dancer symbolizes the five elements sun moon and planets of the designs and motifs of ornaments paintings of hands fingers feet etc the bells on the feet symbolize the bells in the temple sanctorum perhaps the dancer 
is performing the role of a priest or a tantri. Worshipping with the mudras and offering the self before the Lord as a yogi, the body harnessed as the yantra year. There are such esoteric mudras in temples of Kerala and Bengal in Vajrayana Buddhists. The aesthetic hastas in dance have a definite link with tantric mudras, even the great seers like Sri Chandrasekhar and the Swamigal of the Kanchipura Mat, who has written extensively on the Vedas or any, any field of knowledge, has himself said that the uh, science of Tantra has prescribed uh, these uh, mudras and the hastas. In hastas, we find that they are more for public consumption, the more elaborate, better shape and clarity and expressive use, whereas the mudras are for the esoteric rituals and uh, for prana pratishthe, for invoking life in the deities. So we find this evident correlation between, for example, Abhaya or Varada to Pataka, which also gave rise to Sarpasirsa or Swastika, Dola, Hamsasya with Jnana or Vitarka, Hamsasya Hasta with the Mudra of Jnana, and uh, Pasha Ankusha to Pasha, Tamara Chuda, and uh, to the Abhana, uh, the breath posture to Simhomukha, Mrigashisha, etc. So there is definitely uh, the way it is codified in the Natya Shastra also. There has been a link between these practices and the way it is flown. So it will be interesting to correlate some of them and also understand that what was probably used only for a limited um, communication with the deity gets opened up as a larger communication with the world. Um, the origin of the uttered word or vak is depicted by the uh, Rishabha Mudra and one can see the throat of the bull with that. So Shaiva Siddhanta, the uh, school, Shaiva Siddhanta school like uh, Kashmir Shaivism has largely influenced art forms uh, like Bharatanatyam and uh, Tirumandiram of uh, Tirumular is a tantric text which prescribes the ways to attain highest states of bliss and extols the Nadanta posture of Chidambaram Nataraja. Even now, um, the great commentators like uh, Abhinava Gupta, they were all from the Trikar, the Kashmir Shaivistic, the Tantric uh, school. This himself referred to very often as the Tantrika Yogi. So, what we can now realize is that there is much more than what is evident just by reading the apparent, uh, av apparently available text, one needs to also try and fathom what is implicit, secretly coded inside the text, which opens up a great uh, field, a great dimension where we can think in order to evolve oneself in this art. There is one important worshipped Sri Yantra of Sri Vidya, which also needs to be looked at in order to understand how these geometric shapes have been developed. One of the minor Upanishads, the Bhavan Upanishad, establishes a relation between structures of the human body and the Sri Chakra. The Sri Chakra is regarded as a projection of the essential characters of the universe. The meditation method adopted is the Samhara Krama, absorption or dissolution method, which commences from the outermost Avarana and proceeds inwards, systematically till the central point, the Bindu. The diagram of the Sri Chakra is primarily a matrix of nine interlocking triangles. Five of these triangles have their apex facing downward Shakti, the other four upwards Shiva and the intersection of these nine triangles creating 43 triangles with the additional 
Bindu, which is the centermost, also a triangle. So we have ultimately 44 triangles. The Sri Chakra Nyasa identifies the different elements of the Yantra with different parts of the human organism. Bindu is Shiva, Bida is Shakti, and Nada is their union. Tantra associates them with a particular yogic technique. The practice is the Samaya method, the internal worshipful method. Sacred sound, mystic symbol, and they perform the Karanas being adept in dance. Sri Yantra is thus a cosmogram, a graphic representation of the universal process of emanation and reabsorption. So as the various yoginis or the goddesses established within these triangles are worshipped, we see that correspondingly they have their energy fields and their karanas. The saint composer Sri Swami Dikshitar gave initiation to the Tanjur Quartet and became great worshippers of Devi in the Yantra. The Tanjur Quartet gave thus the markam in the format of entering a temple which is again a Yantric diagram. The Alaripu forming the entrance, the Sanctum being the Varnam, Tilana circumambulation and so on. So as a conclusion we say that Thala is absorption, Laya is dissolution, Shiva Vyapti, fusion with Shiva through the path shown by Shakti who is energized in the yantra of body, mind, spirit, a contemplative discipline and an art process are intricately and implicitly connected. Mm.